Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul Conti here for Radio Free Hammer Hall with another weekly math hammer. And this week we're going to take a look at making the most out of the attack power of your putrid Blight Kings. So we've got four main ways to buff up your Blight Kings in the Nurgle book. Uh, you can buff them with the Lord of Plagues, who lets uh, any of them within seven inches reroll ones to hit. The Plague Cyst, which buffs up your Lord of Plagues to let anyone near him re-roll all of their missed hits. The Lord of Blights, who adds a shooting attack to the profile of a nearby uh, Blight King unit. And the Blight Cyst, which buffs up the Lord of Blights to a bubble for his shooting effect and adds Rend 1 and ignoring enemy cover uh, to all of your putrid blight kings. So let's take a look at how this actually maths out. Because my first instinct was, wow, blight cyst seems really, really strong. Uh, Rend is really powerful. And um, I was surprised at the results, to be quite honest. So let's uh, take a look through here. Our base power level on our putrid blight kings. We got five models a unit, they get three attacks each. So they're getting 15 attacks, three up to hit, three up to wound, and on a hit of six plus, they do d6 hits. So on average, you're gonna get 10 successful hits, two and a half on average are going to do d6 hits, uh, which the average on a d6 is 3.5. So you're going to get 16.25 uh, total hits out of that. Um, and then on your wound rolls, that gets reduced down to 10.38. So assuming your opponent has a four up save, you're gonna get about five and a half damage through on average with a unit of Putrid Blight Kings or about one damage per model. Our Lord of Plagues, he adds reroll ones to hit. Now it's important that they're buffing the hit rolls because that's what gives you those D6 hit chances. Uh, so overall, the long and the short of it, this does what really any reroll ones to hit does. And it increases your overall hits by about 17% and your overall damage by about 17%. But it's important to note here that that's increasing your odds of getting those additional d6 hits in there um, so that kind of can amplify the upside potential of this uh, blight kings can be really swingy and this starts to level them out and be a little bit more reliable um, so on average you go from a little better than five uh, damage against an average four up save to a little better than six so you're squeaking out about one more damage per five Blight Kings, uh, just with the Lord of Plagues. And that is to say that's the average, and that's against a four plus save. Um, that's, you know, doing, you know, between 12 and 13 wounds to the enemy if they have a weaker save. And there's lots and lots of ways in the Nurgle book to debuff saves. And I'm gonna talk about that later and the importance of that. Um, that can uh, make a big difference here. So the Plague Cyst uh, turns this into to reroll all hits. And this is just for units that are near your Lord of Plagues. So your Lord of Plagues needs to stay alive. Um, Overall, this is going to increase your damage output by about 33%. Um, again, it's significantly increasing those odds of getting that extra D6 in there. Um, so that is definitely very powerful. Um, so you're going to average against, you know, again, a four up save a little better than seven damage. So that's uh, like overall, that's uh, more than a third better than what you get just uh, rolling with straight Blight Kings. 
So the Lord of Blights, I was always really disappointed in, and I think he's the main reason why I don't like the Blight Cyst Battalion. All he really does is give out a shooting attack, and it's 14 inches, it's 4 to hit, 3 to wound, 1 attack per model. So it's really not increasing very much damage, and there's no benefit to this on your opponent's turn, so basically cut that in half. Um, it, you, these guys are just not doing a lot for you. Um, moving along, I guess, from that, is the Plague Cyst. Now, this is the one that, on its face, seems like outrageously powerful. Um, but when we do out the math, um, it's not really doing that any more damage than the Plague Cyst Battalion. And you're getting taxed with the Lord of Blights rather than having to run the Lord of Plagues, who on his own is kind of a tank. Um, I'm a big fan of the Lord of Plagues. Lord of Blights is pretty terrible. Um, the Lord of Blights adds to um, this a little bit. He gives the, out the shooting attack. Um, and the rend, ignoring the rend, is not dependent on the Lord of Blights, whereas... The rerolls in the Plague Cyst are dependent on the Lord of Plagues being in play. So that is definitely important. Definitely a thing to take into account here. Um, also in here, I'm not uh, notating anywhere that we're also ignoring cover. Um, that's sort of a niche thing. It's going to be good against certain armies, uh, like Deepkin, for example, who get a cover bonus uh, as one of their tide abilities. Um, so it's sort of like having Rend 2 against them in that phase. Um, but I think it overall is too corner case to really make it something that's really measurable in evaluation. So here's our overall comparison. Our Lord of uh, Plagues on his own is increasing by about 17%. The Plague Cyst stacked with the Lord of Plagues is giving you about a 33% buff. The Lord of Blights is adding about a 15% buff. The Blight Cyst is adding about a 33% buff on average, uh, and that is dependent on your opponent's armor saves. Could be better, could be worse, depending on the army. Um, and the Blight Cyst stacking on top of uh, the Lord of Blights uh, goes up to about 48% uh, increase in damage. But again, that's only on your turn when you can make those shooting attacks. So, some other factors to think about. The Plague Cyst also does mortal wounds in the hero phase. Um, it's basically the same ability that the uh, Blight Kings already have. You roll a d6. On a 6, it does d3 mortal wounds, uh, except it's a little bit more aggressive than that, and it stacks with that ability. So you're basically rolling for all of those units within 3 inches of your Blight Kings twice. And if one unit is within 3 inches of multiple units of Blight Kings, you roll for the number of Blight Kings, unlike the Blight King effect. Um, I think it's called Virulent Discharge, if I'm remembering correctly. That is strictly um, being near a unit of Putrid Blight Kings, or being near a unit with that ability. So this impacts all enemy units near a all enemy units of this battalion and it, it it would stack which is important you can wipe out a lot of stuff just by being next to it with this um the downside of the plague cyst is that it really requires the lord of plagues to be alive and near your blight kings to do anything so if you're bringing in a big block of them with gut rot spume on the other side of the board he's no help um the Blight Cyst ignores covered bonuses, which is a major plus. Um, and the buff is static, so it doesn't matter if your Lord of Blights is alive, um, which is good and bad, because he's kind of terrible. The downside, too, of the Plague Cyst is that like the, the 
tendency to just want to YOLO charge with your Lord of Plagues is pretty high because he's just a fun model. Um, you have to use some restraint um, with him, for sure. Uh, so, what else do we have? Here's the problem with Blight Cyst that I've noticed. There are a lot of ways to decrease your opponent's armor. You've got the Rust Fang, you've got the Curse of the Leper from Festus the Leech Lord, you've got Favored Poxes, you've got Gifted Contagion, um, Mystic Shield in 2nd edition has been powered down, so saves are less of a thing. Like, you're not going to just have automatically on the board one unit that is plus one to save. Um, it's going to be a lot harder to get save buffs, so you don't need to do as much debuffing to saves. Um, and in general, buffing hit rolls for your Blight Kings is pretty rare. So, as an individual model, I think the Lord of Plagues is a lot better than the Lord of Blights. He can give you Contagion points, which is really useful. He can do a lot of damage on his own. He's uh, reasonably survivable. He has a command ability that's useful. Uh, Lord of Blights just kind of sits there. He has kind of a crappy shooting attack. Uh, it does have Rend 3 when it connects, but it does not going to connect very often. Um, and he's a little bit more survivable than the Lord of Plagues, but I don't think that's really the thing that you care most about. Um, so to me, the Lord of Blights is sort of a t an extra tax on the battalion. I don't think I would ever run him if I wasn't required to in a Blight Cyst. Um, in general, both of these battalions are really dependent upon your game, your opponent, what other things are in your list, on paper, they're sort of roughly equivalent in power. They're not really um, as radically different. Uh, and for really the reasons that I've outlined here, I think I personally like the Blight Cyst more. Um, the composition of the battalion is almost identical to the, play, uh, the Blight Cyst. And the Plague Cyst is going to give me the Lord of Plagues, which is not really a tax. It's 20 points cheaper, so it gives me a little bit more room in my list. Um, I think opponents are not going to know what's coming with this, and it lets my spells and other things in my list do more work. Um, because I, I think debuffing saves is definitely something worthwhile to do. Um, I... What I've discovered is that being a defensive Nurgle list is really not fun for your opponents. So I'm going all in offense. Uh, that's uh, my game plan here. Um, I really like the Lord of Plagues as well. He's an awesome model. He's a lot of fun. I learned in playing Path to Glory, he is incredibly valuable. Um, and just looking at his command ability and the new command point system, if it's like turn five, and he's still on the board and you've got a few command points like that is a that's a command ability that you just want to sink your remaining command points into to get you that last little edge to win the game um it's super swingy it's unreliable it doesn't do a ton of damage but it's just enough it's just in the right sweet spot where it's gonna occasionally win you a game and it's going to nudge things in the right direction. Uh, sometimes it's going to totally whiff, and that's okay. But in general, I really like it. Um, I think you're really not going to go wrong playing either of these. And, it, and going in either direction, you really just sort of need to build your list around the concepts that are in them. And, uh, you know, if you're going with the Blight Cyst, just don't go as crazy on the armor debuff spells. And if you're going Plague Cyst, yeah, maybe throw a little bit more armor debuff in there. Um, so that's about all I've got for this. Uh, this is a really interesting analysis. I think Plague Cyst is a lot better than I had originally thought it was. Um, and I think I'm going to be giving it a spin a lot more often. 
So that's it for now, guys. We will see you next week.